the difference. Oh no! <laughs> record it again because it just stopped recording Anyways. hey everyone welcome back to my channel in today's video we will just be doing a continuation of my herbalism 101 series and today we'll be talking about the tools and supplies you will need when starting your herbal apothecary so let's begin <laughs> I did already shoot this whole thing, but my camera stopped halfway through and I didn't really like the video up until that point. Anyways, so here we go. We're gonna just redo it. So starting off, I do recommend that you stock up on jars. This will be for your herbs and for your macerations and even for your end product if you don't have an actual like one of these if you don't have enough of these and you have extra or leftover you could also I don't know what these would be called um I got a I think 12 12 or 24 from Amazon uh so I'm gonna put my infused oils in these but you can use them if you make a a big batch of an oxy mill or if you make a big batch of fire cider you can put the rest in here and leave it up and it will be good to go the differences you'll want to also look for is amber and clear um, I do have all of my herbs in clear jars but I try to have them down here and I'll usually have this shut unless I'm doing a video because the Sun can deteriorate the herbs so the only time I have this window open is when I'm doing a video and really the sun can't even reach my herbs, but I do have them down there for that reason. The next item I just showed you, you'll want to have on hand are some dropper bottles. Uh, again, amber because the sun and light will deteriorate the benefits inside of your, either your oils, your maceration or your medicine. So these come, these ones are two ounces. They come in one ounce. I have seen a few in four ounce, but I use these for my end oxy mills and tinctures. You could also use them for face oils, um, for body oils. It all depends on you, but I prefer to use them for the actual medicines I make. Another few items you'll wanna have on hand are these silver tins. Um, the dropper bottles and these tins I did get at my herbal store, they are quite, I mean, not expensive. This was about almost $3 and this was almost $2. On Amazon though, I can get a case of these, a case of 24, 12 in one ounce, 12 in two ounce for about 11 to $12. And then the same with the dropper bottles, I can get a case of 12, two ounces for about 11 to $12. So I will link those below because that is helpful, but these tins if you also subscribe with apothecary at home in every month's box we get about one or two dropper bottles or at least one tin depending on the medicine project we're making so that's why i recommend going with them it's an easy way to stock up but amazon also if you're making a few more tinctures than the subscription box is doing as i currently am right now i have about a dozen things macerating Moving on to the next tool, you will want to get um, a set of funnels. So I have this set, you'll want to get any sort of, I don't know, I don't know what other material they come in. Anyways, you'll want to get a set of funnels of different sizes so that way you can fill up your dropper bottles, fill up roller bottles, whatever you have. But you will want these. These do come in handy if you have been watching my earlier videos where I was using a silicone one that didn't fit. On to our next few items, you will want to get some sort of straining medium. I have both mesh strainers and the Muslim bags that I get from Apothecary at Home. I will be getting more of these because I did wash some and they're not, they are not reusable. 
they just frayed in the washing machine. So these were like one use, good to go, done. But I use these for multiple use, but also you can double them up in, yeah. You can double them up in my anger making solve. I only used the mesh strainer and I did have bits of chamomile petals or little furry things. I don't know what they're called, but I, I don't mind. But if you do mind, just double up, double up, double up. You'll be good to go. Also on hand, you'll want to have some sort of measuring cups or spoons. I have these little, I have these little teaspoon wooden spoons. Um, because they're cute and I had them around. You could use an actual measuring cup or measuring spoon, just so long as you have something to measure them out in. You could also invest in a scale, a kitchen scale. I do not currently have one, but I know some recipes do call out for a weight rather than an actual measurement. Moving on. So I did just get these, but I do recommend it is something you have as you're building your apothecary because one, I love it, and two, it's just useful. So a mortar and pestle, you don't have to get marble, you can get whatever kind, stone, I don't know what this is made of. I think this is about a cup, not sure. I use this to kind of crush up and break up the harder shelled herbs, so that way my menstruum kind of can get into it and I can extract the benefits a little bit more quickly. Well, you can get one from Amazon or any herbal store near you. And moving on to the last of the tools in this video, you would want to have some sort of parchment paper or wax paper. And that is so you can hover your macerations with parchment paper and then put the jar lid on for two reasons the apple cider vinegar and alcohol can corrode the jar and also the chemicals used to coat the jar cover could could be bad or just you don't want chemicals in your medicine defeats the purpose so use parchment or wax paper to kind of seal that out of the way moving on from supply supplies to kind of ingredients that you will want to have on hand. First is you will want to have an array of butters. So I have shea butter, but you will want maybe cocoa butter as well, mango butter. There are a wide range of butters. I personally would go with shea, cocoa, and mango. This is what the shea butter looks like. It smells like licorice. chocolate licorice um, so it smells like licorice and chocolate which I don't care for the smell of licorice but yes it looks like pretty soft pretty creamy um I got this as you saw at my herbal store but you can get them on Amazon um, Amazon actually has a deal where you can get the shea butter, the cocoa butter, and the mango butter for a little bit of a cheaper price. This was like, this was $20 for just this, and I think you can definitely get it cheaper on Amazon. So, of course, I'll link that below for you because I, I don't want you guys spending more than you have to. I, I don't want to. Another type of ingredient or just kind of must-have you can have on hand are beeswax bars or beeswax pellets little flat little wafers I guess or just a block beeswax comes in different colors it comes in yellow white or what I call natural I don't know if it's actually called that some people may call it yellow but I will show you so this one I got from apothecary at home I have been having trouble finding some on Amazon for this particular color they do have just the yellow option or white is what I've found so far so that one and then here's the white and then I'm ordering yellow so I will show that on another day but you will want to have whatever form or whatever color you personally feel or like it doesn't really matter they all do the same thing 
And then beeswax is for, you'll want to use it in your lotions or your salves. It kind of just is an agent that will give it a, a bit of a stiffer feel so it's not melting when it gets a little too warm like how coconut oil does. It can solidify but at a certain room temperature it will go completely liquid. So the beeswax is to help keep your salve or lotion from doing that while still keeping the benefits of the oils or the butters. Another kind of I don't know you can slowly build this collection as you grow you do want to start off with some common ones so what i am talking about is essential oils so for me i did have a little small case of doTERRA where it was about these size about five of them and it was almost 30 dollars. they don't last long at all the you i have eucalyptus and tea tree which i got at a grocery store for under five dollars so you can definitely kind of find frugal ways to go about it because they are still expensive on my favorite store Amazon so I recommend you get if you're starting off get fragrances like lavender or lemon or orange peppermint just kind of the common fragrances that you'd want to add in or you could also get whatever the recipe calls for and just build as you go it all depends on you but they are mighty expensive so i wouldn't recommend unless you can afford it just going out and dropping bands on essential oils and then lastly you'll want all of your solvents now in my previous video i kind of gave you a list of the four general ones i think it was four or five but there are a few more to list. I just personally have not gotten to that portion in my studies yet, but for obvious reasons and just because I've been using it, honey and oil are also solvents that you can use. Um, what they extract, don't know as of yet, but you can definitely make herbal infused honeys and herbal infused oils. So I got a new alcohol, I got brandy, I still have vodka, I got a bigger case of it. Um, you will want any type of alcohol that you get, whether that be the Everclear brandy or vodka, you want it to be at least 80 proof or above. Moving on from that with the honey, you want it to be raw honey. So this says raw clover honey, but I bought it at Smith's. So I, after I am finished with my things of honey that I do have my herbal store, if you it, were able to catch that video and saw them. They have big mason jars full of raw honey and that's just convenient because you'll get a jar out of it in the end too. So I'm gonna start getting my honey from them. And then another thing, oil. There is a list of oils that you'll wanna use. Sunflower, coconut, grape, seed, sweet almond, avocado, and olive, just to name a few, but I will say that the sunflower and coconut oil mixture is by far my favorite. I would highly recommend. I do want to find sunflower seed oil just by itself. That's all I can find, but I love it. And then lastly, I do believe I mentioned it on my previous video, but when getting apple cider vinegar specifically, you'll want to make sure it is the raw mother culture but apple cider vinegar is not the only vinegar you can use. You can also use white wine and red wine vinegar. Um, personally, I would use those ones for flavored vinegars, whereas my apple cider vinegar, I want to use for my oxymills or my medicinal herbal medicines that I'm making. So that's what the apple cider vinegar is for. It's looking like that is about all I have on my desk. Um, other than herbs, but I'm going to do a video on herbs separately. So of course you'll wanna have herbs, but everything else is just a general must have. I would say you don't need to have it right away. As I've said, I just got my mortar and pestle. Everything else I've kind of been building by paycheck. Whatever I can get, I get. So. I hope this kind of list, I hope this, 
So I hope this video was able to give you kind of the basic list of what you need to get started with your apothecary and things you'll need to get it going. Like I said, I will be doing a video on herbs. I think I'm gonna do the top five herbs I feel that you should have because they're benefits and also they are used in almost all recipes that I've come across. But once I get to that video, we'll talk about it. Anyways, I do hope to catch you guys in that video. If you wanna see it, click that bell. If you weren't subscribed already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I do post about herbalism and witchcraft, and I do try to post at least twice a week. So I hope to catch you guys on my next video, and I will see you there. Bye.